a ready reckoner kind of a video to look into how the Astak Varga should be seen, how the Binastak Varga for each uh, planet is created and then using all the planets placement from the other planets, the final chart for that planet is made and all the points to put together, the final Astak Varga is made and that is then plotted in the birth chart to see overall strength of the particular house and how the transits of planets over them will bring good gains. Please like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon so that you get to know when my latest video has come and to learn more and to find a video relevant to you, please do check out my videos list. Hello, Namaskar and Adak to all my friends from your friend astrologer and guide Irfan once more with you from your very own channel Astro Assurance. Whether we get success in a certain area of life is also based on looking at it from a Ashtak Varga point of view. Now what is the Ashtak Varga point of view? Firstly, the Varga means a division and we know that various Vargas, various divisional charts are looked into as part of the overall analysis and we look at the supporting Varga, the supporting divisional chart to give us more confidence on whether the Lagna chart is aided by the divisional chart or not. Ashtak Varga is not about generic results about a house but we are looking at it specifically from placement of a one planet from the other. This is in perspective of a transit. So transit of sun from various planets is seen, transit of sun from itself is also seen, transit of sun from the Lagna is also seen and seen whether sun's transit from that particular planet or from the Lagna or from itself can give good results or can give it strength and how far when sun transits from itself or that planet does strength get attributed to the sun or not. So this is the example of just the sun. Similarly, you may look at it for Venus, you look at it for Moon, Saturn, Jupiter and so on. The only thing is that Rahu and Ketu are not in the mix. So while Ashtak Varga to an extent is a good manner of looking at whether a certain transit will give us good results or not, but it is not a foolproof mechanism and hence not too much should be either read into the Ashtak Varga that because the Ashtak Varga points are high, so there is a higher chance of me getting good results because of that particular transit or because the Ashtak Varga points are less, so I will not get good fruits of that particular house. Please don't depend too much on the Ashtak Varga neither get too dejected if your Ashtak Varga points in a certain house are less. This video I am going to dedicate more to understand what the Ashtak Varga is, how the table is created, how the final tabular format and final points are created and how to an extent you can cull out some of the results for planets. So let's jump into understanding what the Ashtak Varga table is, how it is created for different planets and how the overall analysis is put together in the form of a table and how to use it. Let's look at the following chart, born on March 2nd, 1970 at 4 p.m. in Andhra Pradesh. Once you arrive at the overall horoscope, the ascendant is Cancer and Ketu is placed in the second house in Leo. Jupiter is placed in the fourth house in Libra. Moon is placed in the sixth house in Sagittarius. The 8th house Aquarius has 4 planets, Venus, Rahu, Sun and Mercury. Aries which is the 10th house has Saturn and Mars and the degree of each of the planets is also mentioned. So the ascendant is at 23 degrees, Ketu is at 18 degrees, Jupiter at 12, Moon at 11 and so on. You will be able to see a Nietzsche Bhang Raja Yoga in the 10th house with Saturn and Mars, though Saturn is not exactly debilitated at 11 degrees. You will also be able to see the Vipreetha Raj Yoga by virtue of the 12th Lord being placed in the 8th house which is Mercury being placed there and you will also be able to see the aspects of planets on each other. Now once you see the placements in the horoscope, now the next step to make the Ashtak Varga chart is to see the placements of planet from each other and how in transit from each other they will manifest results. So here, here we see that Sun is in the 8000 Aquarius sign. Now 
the first step is to make a binashtak varga which means a varga table for the sun itself now according to parashara sun in transit for itself is benefit in the first house the second fourth seventh eighth ninth tenth and eleventh houses which means if sun is in aquarius as we have seen in this respective in this respective chart then sun from the various placements from itself will give good results so sun from aquarius will give good results in the first second fourth seventh eighth ninth tenth and eleventh houses starting from aquarius if sun was in aries then in transit sun would have been benefit in the first house which is in aries in the second house from aries which is taurus then in the fourth house which is in cancer and so on if sun was in taurus then sun would have been benefit in the first house from taurus which is taurus in the second house which is gemini fourth house leo and so and so forth but in this example as sun is in aquarius then sun would be a benefit in the first house from aquarius which is aquarius itself the second house from us which is pisces the fourth house from it which is taurus the seventh house which is leo eighth house which is virgo ninth house libra tenth house scorpio and 11th house sagittarius so which mean that whenever sun will transit over aquarius sign pisces sign taurus sign leo virgo libra scorpio or sagittarius it will give benefic results so keeping this in mind a lagna for the sun is created so because sun is in aquarius in the birth horoscope and when the lagna is created keeping aquarius as it with sun there then you put points of the benefic positions from the sun itself and trans sun transits over those houses from itself so for example because the birth horoscope is aquarius we make the aquarius horoscope as sun is placed in it and then we add points for each of the transitory benefic positions of sun because the shloka says that sun is benefic in the first house from aquarius which is aquarius itself so you add one bindi over sun's placement in the horoscope then in the second house which is pisces then in the fourth house which is taurus which this number here denotes so this number here 2 denotes the taurus sign but the house this house is the fourth house and then in the seventh sign so seventh house which is leo and then the eighth house which is virgo then ninth house which is libra sign 10th house which is scorpio and the 11th house which is sagittarius sign which means whenever sun transits over these signs or these horoscope these houses over from itself it will give benefic results and hence one bindi or one point is given to sun transit over these signs and once you do that for the transit of sun from itself then you look at the next planet which is the moon now the shloka says that sun in transit is benefit in the 3rd 6th 10th and 11th houses away from the moon now moon in the birth horoscope is placed in the sagittarius sign so you make the sagittarius lagna and from there calculate the 3rd 6th 10th and 11th position of sun in transit and give points to that so here the third horoscope the third house from the lagna of sagittarius will be aquarius so aquarius sign is given one one bindu and then similarly the 6th house the 10th house and the 11th house will be given one one benefic point then you look at the transit of similarly from the other planets so from mars sun is benefic in one second four seven eight nine ten and eleven positions so a similar chart like that for sun's placement from itself or moon's placement from sun is created similarly from mercury and then for jupiter and for saturn and then from venus and from the ascendant itself say from the ascendant sun is benefic in the 3rd 4th 6th 10th 11th and 12th positions which is here because the ascendant is cancer so keeping cancer as the lagna we put points in each of these houses when you look at all of these transits of the sun from the respective planets then a final table is created now this is more like a ready reckoner table the birth chart is on the bottom on the right hand side 
Here you can see Sun is placed in Aquarius and Mars is placed in Aries, which is three houses away from the Sun. Now, because we say that Sun is benefit in the first house from Mars, which means as this line says, Sun is benefit in 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 positions. Then the first house from Mars is the house in which Mars is placed itself, which means one point has to be given to the Aries sign. Now, when you look at the table, the Binashtak Varga table, when you calculate the transit of Sun from Mars, we know that Sun will be benefit in the houses 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 positions. Here in the birth chart, we know that Mars is in Aries. So, the Sun's transit from Aries should be seen because Mars is in Aries. So, one point should be given to the Aries sign in the column under the Sun's row. So, Sun from itself, from Mars for example, in Aries sign should have one point which is highlighted here. And then Sun also in the second house from Mars gives another point which is highlighted in the second sign column under Mars. But it does not give any points in the third house from Mars and hence under the third sign from Mars in the row of Mars we get zero points. But in the fourth house it does get one window and so we do it for all the positions where Sun's transit from Mars has been seen as benefit and total points from for Mars is added and put together. So when we look at each and every planet and Sun's transit from it by virtue of whether it's a benefit or not and then we add the Sun's Ashtakvarga points or Binashtakvarga points then we find that those overall points will be placed in the each sign under the signs column. Say for example, for Aquarius sign, whenever Sun transits over Aquarius, you will find that it will give 5 benefit points or its strength is 5 and hence, once you plot for each of the signs, so under Aquarius you have 5, under Pisces you have 2, under Aries you have 4, under Taurus you have 5 and you point, when you plot all those points, you will find that the overall strength of the Sun to in its ability to give overall tally is 48 which is very strong and then when you plot each of these points for the respective signs and you plot it in the actual birth horoscope you will find that the number which is in turn inside is the number of the sign so for example in the eighth house in the horoscope for sun you will find that the eighth house has 11 number and 5 the 11 number which is inside is for the Aquarius sign and the 5 number is for the overall strength in terms of benefit points that the particular sign has by virtue of Sun's transit over, his, over it. And then similarly, under the 12th column, you will find that overall 2 points are given for the Sun's transit over, Aquarius, over Pisces. And so the Pisces sign, which is the ninth house for this ascendant, you will find two points given which is on the outside. So the number on the inside is the number of the sign whereas the number on the outside is the total points given for Sun's transit over that particular sign and house. And so on for the third house, fourth, fifth and all the points are plotted. And once the overall points are plotted you will find that whenever the Sun will be transit over the Lagna you have four points. Whenever Sun will transit over Gemini sign you, uh, over Leo sign you will have three points whenever Sun transits over Virgo it has three points and so on. Now one of the things you will see here is that when Sun is transiting over itself over Leo sign Sun is able to generate only three benefit points. However when Sun is transiting over Libra which is an invigil sign to itself it is still generating seven points six points and when it is transiting over another friendly sign which is Pisces, it is generating just two benefic points. So this means that this, the Ashtakvarga table does not keep take into account that when Sun transits over its own sign or its natural house which is Scorpio here in the fifth house, Sun will be generating more strength and when Sun transits over 
the tenth house where it gets big bala strength, it will also generate more strength. So that is not taken into account, and only from by virtue of transit from a particular placement with reference with reference to planets is taken. So here, this is the binastak varga of the sun. Now, when you calculate the binastak varga of different planets, say the Rule for moon is moon is benefic in the first, third, sixth, seventh, tenth, eleventh position from itself, and then the sun is benefic in the third, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth placement from the sun. Mars is benefic. Then for Mars, moon is benefic in the second, third, fifth, sixth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh positions. From Mercury, moon is benefic in the third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, tenth, and eleventh position, and so on. For all the planets, other planets, including the ascendant. Now, when you plot using the similar fashion or similar manner that we use for sun, here you will find that the overall placement versus each sign has generated some points. So, for example, Moon's transit over Aries with respect to Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and all put together generates five points. Over the Taurus sign generates six points. Over the Gemini sign. Sign generates five point, and so on. And when the final plot points are plotted over the binastak varga of the moon, you will find that moon's transit over itself, over the lagna, is generating just two points, whereas moon's transit over Virgo sign, which is an inimical sign to itself, is generating very high seven points. And so, this is a Manner of seeing the points generated by a planet with respect to transit over the other planet, and not keeping into account whether the planet is strong or exalted or debilitated in the respective sign or not. And then you generate the binastak varga of Mars, and then you put together the chart for Mars, and you plot the horoscope or the chart for Mars. Then you look at the binastak varga of Mercury. With respect to transit from each of these signs, creating overall points for each of the signs, and then plotting it in the overall lagna. So the lagna remains Cancer as it is seen in the lagna here with four number inside, but on the outside is the number which Mercury will be generating when it transits over the particular sign. So here Mercury is generating six points when it transits over Cancer sign. However, When it is transiting over its own sign Virgo, which is its exaltation sign, you find that it is giving only three benefic points. Whereas even in Gemini, when it is transiting over Gemini, it is generating only three points. So when you take into account the binastak Virgo of Jupiter and create the chart for Jupiter and so on, you will find that. Each one of them is also given a final tally of points. Here, Jupiter has the highest final tally of points, which is 56 points, because Jupiter is also the biggest benefit. Then you move on to Venus and you plot the horoscope or the chart for Venus, and you plot each of the transits of Venus over the lagna chart, keeping in mind what kind of benefit point it is generating over each of the signs. And you will find that Venus also is given a tally of high 52 points when compared to the other planets, which may be as low as 39 for Saturn. And then when you create the binastak varga of Saturn with reference to what Saturn's benefit points will be from transit from various planets, you will be able to create the chart for Saturn, which means that. For each of the positions of Saturn, from respect to other planet, what points it will be given? So, for example, here we see that Saturn is benefit in the third, fifth, sixth, and eleventh from itself. So, where is Saturn in the birth chart? In the lagna chart, it is in the tenth house. So, in the tenth house, because we have said that it will give from the third, it will give points from itself in the third, fifth, sixth, and eleventh. So, Saturn will give. When you look at the Saturn's placement from itself in the third house form itself, it gives one point. In the fifth house form itself, it gets another point. In the sixth house form itself, it gets another point. And overall points with respect to Saturn's transit from it over itself will give you four points. 
and we need to take into account Saturn's transit from various other planets and you plot the total tally with respect to that particular sign, you find that Saturn's transit over Aries gets one window or one point. Total points, benefit points given to Saturn for all its transits combined over all planets is only 39. And then you plot the chart for Saturn and then you do it for all the planets and then the final Ashtak Varga table is created. This Ashtak Varga table is created putting together all the Binastak Varga points of each of the planets and how the horoscope is. So if you look at the Sun's chart, if you go back and find Sun's number of points in Aries, you will find we had given 4 points to Sun. Over Taurus in its transit, it was generating 5 benefit points. And so when you put all the points together and you give a total, what is the overall strength of the particular sign, that total at the bottom row tells us how strong that particular sign is. So which means the first sign here is Aries which is generating overall benefit points of 28 with respect to transit of various planets over it. Then the transit over Taurus for all planets put together is generating 31 points. So you can say the Taurus sign is generating an overall strength of 31, Gemini is generating 24, Cancer is generating 32. Leo is generating 26 and so on. So here you will find that the highest tally or biggest strength is for Sagittarius sign which is 37 and then post that is the Libra sign which is 33 and then you have Cancer sign which is the Ascendant which has 32 points and then Taurus sign is generating 31 points as well as Aquarius which is generating 31 points. The least number of points is being gathered by Pisces, which is the ninth house and supposed to be the highest house for gains. Yet, you will find that the total transits of all planets put together as a final Ashtak Varga table are just giving us 18 points. And hence, total dependency or a lot of dependency only on the Ashtak Varga table and analyzing results from it will not be correct. Now when you put together all the total strength of all the planets in the Ashtak Varga table and then plot it over the respective birth chart, this is how it will look like. So this is still a Cancer birth chart for in the Lagna in the inside which show that it is a Cancer Lagna and you find that the Lagna is generating 32 benefit points. The second house which, is, which has the sign Leo is generating 26 points. The third house which is the Virgo sign is generating 28 points. The fourth house which has the Libra sign is generating 33 points and so on. So here we will find that the strongest strength in terms of number of points is generated by the sixth house of Sagittarius signs. Now the sixth house is a Dusthana yet it is generating the highest number of benefit points by virtue of the transit over it. This means that the sixth house in terms of service and service to others and Sagittarius being a sign of spirituality, higher learning and guidance. So this person may get his maximum benefit when he's resorting to or taking spiritual medium to reach out and help others. And because Sagittarius is also a sign of long distance travel and meeting and relating to other cultures, so this person may also be a counsel or a guide to people from across communities, across cultures, across national boundaries and will be able to serve people in spirituality or using spirituality as a medium or higher learning as a medium or a management consultant and his best gains will be in service to people either through consulting or through guiding or advising. Now the other important thing is that the 10th house has 28 points whereas the 11th house has 31 points. Now because we know that the second house to a particular house is the earning from that house. So the 11th house is the earning from the 10th house. Now because the 10th house has only 28 points whereas the 11th house has 31 points. This means that the person's effort will be beneficial to him. The more effort that he puts in the more success he will get and the success is coming from the Taurus sign which means money will come in 
when the higher the effort is. So the higher the effort he puts into in his career, which is strongly connected to the sixth house of service, the more gains he will make, the more money he will make, the more materialistic gains he will make in his aspirations coming through, in his wishes coming through and in the general society. Because the 11th house is the, ha is the house of general society and reaching to a social network beyond his immediate network. So whenever he does service to people across cultures, across communities, across boundaries, then the person will find that he will get name, fame and more success. The more effort he puts in, he will gain more. So normally, which is 24 and less points is seen as not being very beneficial for that particular house, but points over 30 are supposed to be very good. So when the final table is created for the Samudaya Ashtak Varga or the total Ashtak Varga, you will find that the cancer sign, the Lagna has 32 points, which means the person will gain overall through his efforts, through his approach to serving and through that he will also gain name, fame and success in society and may also gain good material benefits and domestic peace and happiness as the high 33 points in the 4000 Libra I seen. Libra is also the sign of relationship, so he will be very balanced in his relationships, will be very um, patient also and will also approach relationship as an as a equal part partner because of Libra energy. So overall results should be seen keeping in mind the Ashtak Varuga points, it should also be seen what house has generated how many points, what are the placements of what planets in the respective houses. For example, we saw that the second house is generating less points yet and Ketu is also placed there. So overall analysis should be kept in mind, keeping some part, some attention to Ashtak Varga, some attention to the Yogas, to the Doshas, overall strength of the horoscope and how strong the, the, the Dasha Lords also are and the uh, Antar Dasha Lords also are there and whether there are any conjunction or aspects on it and only one thing should not be kept into mind. And a ready reckoner kind of a video to look into how the Ashtak Varga should be seen, how the Binastak Varga for each uh, planet is created and then using all the planets placement from the other planets, the final chart for that planet is made and all the points to put together the final Ashtak Varga is made and that is then plotted in the birth chart to see overall strength of the particular house and how the transits of planets over them will bring good gains. So friends, use Ashtak Varga only as a ready reckoner and as a guide but not take too, give too much importance to Ashtak Varga saying that if the Ashtak Varga has high points then obviously I will get very good results or if the Ashtak Varga points are low then don't be too dejected by it because there are many other things which contribute to give overall results of that particular house and the site. So friends, please like this video, please share this video and please subscribe to my channel and if you are looking for a personal consultation for me, please reach out to me at the links given below. And till some other time with some other video, this is your friend, astrologer and guide Irfan signing off. Ciao.